Hello, everybody. My guest today is David Chanyik. He's the founder and CEO of a company called Memsource, a software company providing cloud-based translation technology headquartered in Prague, Czech Republic. David, a graduate in translation and comparative studies, received his education at Charles University in Prague, Humboldt University in Berlin, as well as the University of Vienna. David, are you ready to take us to the top? Sure. All right. Tell us about Memsource. What's the company doing? How do you make money? So I founded Memsource in 2010. And uh, we help global companies translate more efficiently. And we're cloud-based uh, software, so we provide subscription. And then what's the average customer pay per month? Uh, it's about $5,000. Okay, so you're very much in the enterprise space. Yeah. Okay, got it. Very good. And, and what do they get? If they pay five grand a month, what do they get for that? So they get pretty much a, um, a complete solution uh, that has you know, two major components for your uh, enterprise globalization. Basically, it's a translation management system. Uh, so it, it's, a, it's a workflow. So it's a way to uh, connect to your content repository. It could be a, you know, a CMS that we connect to. And then we, we, we have a workflow that shifts the data to maybe the translators, the revisers, and then back to, to the CMS. And then we also have a, a translation tool for, for all the translators, revisers, both editors, you know, the, the linguists. So these are the main two things, the workflow and the actual translation tool. And you've launched, you launched in 2010. What have you scaled to today in terms of total customers on the platform? So we have, we have about 500 paying enterprise customers. And um, we have uh, uh, about 200K users. Um, and, uh, you know, our users are basically uh, our translators, transition companies, and enterprise uh, users. So these are the, you know, these are the three big kind of user groups. And in terms of, you know, you can also get the segment. So we provide, you know, we provide uh, the transition tool to translators and the workflow, the whole workflow component, the transition management system we provide to global companies. And David, when I take 500 customers times that 5,000 per month price point you just gave me, that would put you at $2.5 million per month. Is that accurate? It's actually, it's a little less. Okay. But can we say but between 2 million and 2.5? Yeah, more or less. Okay, great. Well, more or less. So is it in that range or is it still lower than 2 million? So we're, um, so we're going, you know, we're, um, what we're doing is, uh, is, uh, we have a growing number of enterprise customers, uh, that are joining our platform. So, uh, historically we were focusing more on the small, on, on smaller customers, you know, and they're still with us. Makes so, perfect sense. So new customers yeah. signing up are at that $5,000 per month price yeah, point on exactly. average. But historically, by the way, this is very typical. Historically, folks were paying less. So, so what are you at today? Are you doing one eight per uh, month? We're, so so we're, we're, uh, our next aim, our next aim is, to, is to get to $10 million of, of uh, annual uh, revenue. You know. okay. okay. And so, and walk me through kind of where you're at today. Do you think you'll hit that this year? Um, probably next year. Okay. Yeah. So 10, 10 million in ARR would be 830 grand per month in revenue. Uh, again, can you give me a general sense of where you're at today? So, um, a range is fine by the way, if you don't want to say the exact number. Yeah. Look, I think, I think I've, I, I, you, you get the idea. I know where, where we are. Well, no, 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 I'm actually not sure. I thought it was 2 million by multiplying your numbers, but it's actually, it's, it's, it's less than that. I don't know if it's a hundred thousand a month or 500,000 a month. Yeah. So, so are you, you trying, know, let me ask it differently. Let me ask you differently. So you don't have to, so you don't have to say an actual number. Are, are you, are you trying to double your, what, what growth rate are you targeting? What growth would you have to hit to hit that $10 million mark next year? So we grew hundred percent year on year last year. And, uh, we're going, you know, we're going to, so as we grow bigger, you know, we're, uh, we're going to grow at a little bit lower rate than hundred percent. Uh, this year. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm asking. So that, that $10 million target, what, if you hit that, what growth would you have hit? Are you, are you kind of modeling 80% year over year growth, 60% year over year growth? What's that put you at? Yeah. So, so, you know, last year we, uh, uh, we were at about, uh, 
uh, $5 million. Great. So you're trying, you're still trying to, I mean, these are big numbers. These are getting bigger. You're trying to still double year over year. Uh, this year we won't double. So if we doubled this year, we would be at 10 million. Yeah. And so we'll be at 10 million, 10 million next year. So we will not double, uh, uh this year because, uh, I think doubling forever is probably yeah. not, not, <laughs> not our, not yeah. our strategy. And also, you know, we're bootstrapped. So, so we're, we're, you know, our, uh, our growth is, 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 uh, you know, needs to be profitable in, in, uh, so, so we, we need to, you know, we, we're running a company that is a uh, self-financed currently. Yeah. By the way, congratulations uh, on the scale that you've reached bootstrapping. That's rare. And I applaud you. And I think that's wonderful. I can't wait to go through the rest of the interview and learn how you've done that. Just to confirm though. So the end of December, 2017, you said you hit that $5 million run rate. Is that accurate? Exactly. Okay, good. And you're giving yourself essentially 24 months to double that. Yeah. I think that's, that's pretty reasonable. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So at a $5 million run rate in December of 2017, that means you're doing North of kind of four, 420 grand per month. You've got 500 customers, some of them paying less than five grand per month, but new ones you're signing up are at that five grand per month level for these translation services. Give me more of the backstory here. So you launched in 2010. What were you doing before that? So before that I was, uh, I worked in, a. You know, my first job was was uh, was with a recruitment company. Then I, uh, you know, I was I was always interested kind of in, in technology. So in that recruitment company, I was trying to figure out the market. Uh, the the you know the uh, and and I was uh, I actually uh, went to work for a couple of technology companies afterwards, a telco and and a, a startup afterwards. So it was a language technology startup. Uh huh. Um, and, uh, that's where I, you know, met some of the, uh, some of the people that work with me currently at, at Memsource. And what's the team size today? So we're, uh, we're 80 currently. You said eight? Eight zero. Yep. Eight zero. Great. And everyone's in Prague? No. So we have, uh, most people in Prague and then we have, uh, some people, uh, in the U S, uh, we have a small team in Japan also. And then we have a few people, you know, all over Europe and we have one person in Canada. We have uh, one person in Korea. So. That's great. Well, David, look, I have to tell you, we've interviewed thousands of B2B SaaS CEOs and the average revenue per employee across all of these is about 137,000 bucks. If across, just across bootstrapped companies, that number is about 250,000. Currently, if you're north of a $5 million run rate and you've got eight employees, you're up at like 660 grand. So I love that you're doing this highly in a highly profitable way. You're super capital efficient. Walk me through some other, some of the key kind of unit economics. Churn is critical in a SaaS business. What is your churn today and how do you manage it? So, um, so, you know, Memsource, Memsource is, a, 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 is a, you know, pretty sticky service. So, so obviously to uh, be able to succeed, you know, we, you know, we make sure that our turn rate is pretty, uh, you know, pretty manageable. So we'll, we'll quantify you know, that for me. So what is churn? What's, what's logo churn per month today or, or annually? So, so, uh, we, you know, month to month, you know, we're, we're between two and 3% of, of, uh, revenue that we lose. Okay. Know, so, and that's, month, and that's net, that's net, that's net or gross. That's net. Yeah. Okay. True. So you're adding back expansion revenue. Yeah. Is that, is that, you seem uncertain. Is that accurate? I lost, I lost you for, for a sec. Can you please repeat? Maybe. Yeah. I was just saying you seemed uncertain when I said you add back expansion revenue. I just want to make sure. So it's, you have less than 3% net revenue churn per month, which means you're adding back expansion. Is that accurate? Look, I, I'm probably, you know, I would, I would need to check with the person that's managing the churn to answer. Uh, David, you know. come on, hold on. There's eight people in the company. One of the critical <laughs> metrics in a SaaS company is churn. Zero people in the company. Oh, you said eight zero. Yeah. Oh, I thought you said eight. Okay, I take no, back. I, no. I take back my comment about revenue per employee. Then it's 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 way less no, than six. No, no, that, that would that wouldn't make any sense. And actually, you know, we've uh, uh, we've grown a lot. We've we've actually uh, been very successful last year, and we expanded um, the Memsource team from uh, thirty five to seventy uh, between two thousand seven early 2017 and, 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 and early 2018. And we've added a few more people in the meantime. So, 
so this actually, you know, this year or the last 12 to 16 months, you know, we saw you know, a huge expansion in, in, in our team. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, we built, you know, we created a few new teams like uh, we, we've created a mobile team and artificial intelligence team. Uh, we've expanded uh, our QA team to test software better. But David, are you just, I mean, are you just adding headcount and adding expenses or are these guys, are these extra divisions driving growth yet and new revenue? That's been an investment that we made and we, and now we're working and we've added also salespeople, you know, we've added salespeople in the U S yep. uh, and, and also in Europe. And, uh, so we, we, we added people across the board, all teams, you know, and we added a lot of people to our technology, uh, to our R and D team. Yep. Walk me through, uh, your customer acquisition costs today. What's your fully weighted CAC? So I, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I won't share that. Okay, and, and why is that? Help me understand why that's sensitive information. Well, you know, it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm ready to talk maybe a little bit about, about the product, you know, but, but, you know, I'm not going to go through all the financial information here. David, uh, sorry, have you, just out of curiosity, have you listened to any of the episodes before, before you came on? Well, some of them, yeah. Okay. So, so, you know, it's not a, it's not a marketing show. We don't dive deep and let you just talk and market the product the whole time. I think we've got a good idea about what the product does from our first three minutes. Is there something you want to add that we missed? Um, sure. So okay, what, 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 what did we miss in the beginning? Well, you didn't have any, any question on, on the product. So yeah, you know. my first question was what's the company do and how do you make money? And you said, and, and you, broke down what the company does. So it sounds like you want to say something else about what the product does. Sure. So, um, you know, uh, we're, uh, basically, you know, we're, uh, focusing on, uh, so you asked, you know, about the expansion of our team. You thought, you know, we're, we're eight people. We're actually 80 people. Well, you said, so, sorry, you said you, I thought you said eight and I said, did you say eight? And you said, yes. And then I, I said, said eight zero. I said eight zero, you know, just, just to make it, just to make it clear. Yeah. Well, you, you corrected me. So that's good now. But, but again, I want to, did I miss something critical about what the product does that we didn't discuss in the beginning? Yeah, I think, I think a lot of things, but you know, probably you don't want to, deep dive, you know, uh, you, you don't want to, uh, you know, deep dive in, in, into the product, I guess. Uh, well, yeah, no, David, I want to get inside your head. I mean, you've done something incredible, which is you've bootstrapped a company to over 5 million bucks in ARR from Prague, right? So, so I want to highlight that story. And, and what I found with my audience is they really appreciate when there's qualitative stories, but they have to be tied to a quantitative data point. Cause a lot of people come on and bullshit right? You're not bullshitting. I can t- I mean, you've scaled this thing bootstrap. So it only, I think it only helps you. So let me, let me maybe ask you this, right? What is your cu- current customer acquisition cost? What are you happy to spend to acquire a new customer and which product right now, which are your lines is getting the, the most adoption? What's most popular? So maybe, you know, how to approach this is, you know, we, so I told you we have we have three segments of customers. We have freelance translators as as uh, that that's one segment. You know we let them sign up. They either use our free version or uh, they pay for uh, a paid version that has some additional features. And uh, they will uh, you know for, for these obviously that's an that's a uh, that that's an area where we maybe have some advertising. You know so we're spending a little bit. On that, but the revenue is not it's not driving our revenue so we're, we will not be spending a, a, a lot there uh, we have uh, translation companies which is an important segment for us um, so just to give you an idea we go to about 50 trade shows uh, every every year uh, uh, across the world um, what, that, that must I mean that must be expensive to fly teams to these trade shows you're paying sponsorship yeah. fees potentially I mean are you spending, like how expensive give me a sense of how expensive that is like are we talking? Uh, are we talking more than like five hundred thousand bucks per year just on trade shows? Uh, so we're we're talking. You know, we're talking about you know every trade show will you know could be something between you know you know like six to ten thousand dollars. So it will be approaching that figure. That includes the sponsor fee plus flying your team there, all that stuff. Yeah, some of them are smaller events, but some of them are larger events. So you know. Okay. It, 
will it will be that amount. Uh, and would you say that this is maybe your your number one growth channel? Are these trade shows? Trade shows are important, and uh, that's probably yeah, that's our that's our biggest cost currently. I think. Okay. And so when yeah. you when you go spend six or ten grand on a trade show, how many customers will you hope to get out of that? So you know, we'll hope we'll from each trade show we would hope to get a few customers. You know, probably it's going to be you know between three to five. Okay. So if you, if you crush a trade show, you get five new customers from that and you spend 10 grand on it. What I'm hearing you say is you're totally fine spending two or three grand to acquire these customers, especially if you're selling them on a $5,000 per month plan. Sure. But is that, I, I don't want you to just agree with me. Is that accurate? Correct me if I'm wrong. It is. It is. Okay, great. And, and as a bootstrapped company, right? How do you think about making sure you never run into any cash gap issues where you're spending money up front to get a customer and it takes you 18 months to get it back? In other words, how quickly do you like to get the money back? So we, we spend the money up front, but we also, uh, you know, we're, we're a prepaid service, right? So for the year. So, uh, yeah. So our customers, a lot of the time, not everyone, but a lot of the time, our customers prepay for a year, just That's not right. to have the hassle to, to go through, uh, you know, the payment site, you know, approvals and so on. So, so pretty they're much. Being, they're uh, being caught 60 grand up front. Yeah, sure. Yep. That's great. L last question here. So we talked a little bit about your churn. Do you use lifetime value at all to guide your decision making or is it just a vanity metric? So that's, that's the, the, the team that's responsible for churn. They're, they're using that. Yeah. How do they okay. use that? How do they use that data point? Yeah, I should have, in, I should have taken them to the call here. So, um, uh, that, that's our reference point. That's, that's, uh, I know that this is what they're following as a standard. Uh, and, uh, so, uh, well, sorry, using... David, what standard are you optimizing for? Is there a ratio you're optimizing for or a five you know, year LTV? What are they optimizing for? So we're optimizing to be kind of in the, uh, in the, you know, uh, I, I believe what's the industry standard for churn, you know, if your churn is probably, is, 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 I don't know, 10%, you know, probably that something's wrong with your product. If it's between, you know, around 2%, then, uh, I guess we're fine. We're, so we're trying to benchmark against what's the, what's the industry standard there. Yep. Very good. Last few questions here. So again, you built a great company. You've resisted the urge to raise. Are, are you raising right now? Is there any reason you would ever raise capital? So we haven't raised so far and there's some advantages. Uh, you know, we, we would, we're all, we're, we're, you know, we would, we wouldn't say categorically no, but we don't currently, we don't need to raise. So it would have to be a good opportunity for us. And, and, uh, uh it would certainly be a, a, a change, uh, a, a change in, in, in the way we operate. Mm -hmm. so, so again, you're doing 5 million right now on a run, right? Let's say someone came in and, and gave you 5 million bucks on a $40 million pre-money valuation. So you're selling less than, well, a little more than 10% of the company. I mean, is that a kind of deal that would get you excited? Uh, I would say, uh, I would think about it. Come on, David, it's a 10, it's 10 X your ARR. Come on. Yeah, I, I would give, I would give it a thought. Yeah. <laughs> if you, if you release a statement after the show goes live, like a month later, it says we've just raised 5 million from Excel on 45 million pre-money. I'm going to go, David, where's my royalty? I want 2% royalty <laughs> check. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Okay. Yeah, let's, yeah. let's wrap up here, David, with the famous five. Number one, what is your favorite business book? Sorry, you, you were breaking up. Can, oh, can that's you okay. Me? What's your favorite business book? <laughs> What's my favorite? Okay. So look, I, I, um, don't make one up. Say none. If you don't No, no, I'm, I'm not into business books. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Give me, give me one off the radar. Somebody in Prague you really respect. There is, it's not a CEO, uh, but his name is Jan Zadak. Uh, he, he, he worked in very senior positions in, uh, at HP. And, Spell it. Spell his name. J-A-N-Z-A-D-A-K. And uh, he's been, you know, so, so that, that's someone I know personally and I respect. Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building your business? Hmm. That's a good question. There's a number. I, I think currently probably Slack. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? <laughs> On average six. 
Okay. And what's your situation? Married, single, kiddos? I'm married with two kids. Two. Okay. And how old are you? They're eight. How old, how old are the kids or how old? No, no. How old are you? <laughs> so I'm 44. 44. Last one, question. One number you get accurately from me. There you go. All right. Uh, last question here. What do you wish your 20 year old self knew? Sorry, can you repeat? What do you wish you, uh, your 20 year old self knew? If I was 20 year olds, what I would want to do? Yeah, just something when you were 20, what is something that you wish you knew? Oh, okay. Uh, well, uh, I, I wish I, uh, I wish I would, you know, I would have more kids probably. And, and it's, uh, so I would, I wish I, I would know that, you know, it's, it's possible to have kids earlier and, and it's possible to combine it with work. And so that was, maybe I started late and, and so yeah, it'd be great to have more kids than two. Guys, more kids. There you have it from David. Again, launched Memsource Translation Company, selling really to freelancers, translation professionals, launched in 2010. Bootstrapped it all the way up to today, 500 customers doing you know, past $5 million run rate in December of 2017, hoping to double that over the next 12 to 24 months to 10 million bucks. Economics sound like they look, uh, look good. Less than 3% net revenue churn per month. Totally willing to spend at conferences, you know, spend 10 grand to get five customers, 2K CAC with a quick payback period because they are typically signing up new people at five grand a month, all paid up front. Their team of 80 based in remote locations all around the world. David, thank you so much for taking us to the top. Thanks, Nathan. It's good talking to you.